we shall now go on to our next speaker dr shreesh kumar shreesh could you share your uh, slides uh, he is our medical superintendent at the ai foundation and a senior consultant of cornea refractive and cataract services naming a few of the awards he has received are a cp gupta best paper award the shipra sadhadi award and many more prestigious awards has had a major presence in national and international conferences principal investigator for several drug trials a good number of publications in peer reviewed and non peer reviewed journals and has performed live surgeries in innumerable conferences he is also a reviewer for very reputed journals and has had innovative surgical procedures to his name the cap back ccc in intumus and cataract the contingival tissue autograph and the vertical split autograph for varied presentations of terigium dr shreesh will be talking on differentiating infectious and non infectious keratitis so we go on to the next uh, set of uh, talks in uh, keratitis on to you dr shreesh so good morning uh, thank you dr chitra for giving me this opportunity and uh, my talk is on differentiating infectious from non infectious keratitis uh, as uh, we all know oh, like uh, uh making a clinical diagnosis is very important uh, and the cytological diagnosis like uh, uh or like grams or uh, koh staining or impression techniques uh, can be done but uh, uh, some of these are uh, slide is not better. showing the next slide yes yes yeah poor sensitivity and uh, uh confocal microscopy is another rapid diagnostic technique uh, for the diagnosis of uh, infectious keratitis however its uh, discriminative power is limited in relatively large microorganisms like uh, canthamoeba or uh, large fungi uh so although uh, like microbial culture is a good standard for uh, diagnosis of infectious keratitis the incubation time is at least 2 uh, days for bacteria and uh, up to 2 to 4 weeks for viruses fungi and mycobacteria and it's important to have a clinical knowledge of these conditions so that you can initiate therapy before the reports are available so uh, contactless related keratitis is one of the commonest conditions seen in our day to day practice and many of us find uh, difficulty in differentiating infectious from non infectious keratitis and there are certain specific history symptoms and signs that can differentiate these two entities overnight use is a leading the risk factor for microbial keratitis and as is extended wear and poor hygiene and not using appropriate uh, cleaning solutions uh, are some of the leading causes for microbial keratitis in a contact lens induced uh, keratitis uh, and uh, the commonest uh, organisms so what we notice is uh, pseudomonas uh, followed by staphylococcus uh, streptococcus and uh, even acanthamoeba in our setup uh, are common uh, uh, for microbial uh, microbial keratitis uh, so these patients uh, can have uh, moderate to severe symptoms they can have uh, redness uh, uh, pain photophobia puffiness of uh, lids uh, and uh, the infiltrate can uh, vary in size which can vary uh, from 1 to 3 4 mm in contact lens related uh, keratitis uh, they can assume uh, different shapes uh, and the, there can be epithelial breakdown in these cases the symptoms are much more as compared to uh non infectious keratitis uh, and the patient the depth of these ulcers uh, can vary it can go right up to endothelium and the patients even can have uh, hypopion coming to sterile keratitis uh, uh, by a sterile infectious keratitis uh, in a contact lens related cases uh, most often it is uh, immunological uh, reaction uh, uh, due to contact lens wear itself and uh, contact lens wear itself or uh, due to endotoxin uh, by the bacteria the, or a combination of these two and most often these uh, uh, sterile infiltrates are located in the periphery of the cornea and most often there may not be any epithelial defect and the symptoms are light as compared to microbial keratitis uh, uh, you can see a small uh, pinhead sized or uh, uh, small infiltrate uh, less than uh, oh, 
or uh, equal to one millimeters uh, in size and uh, not extending deep up to the uh, <coughs> like uh, sterile uh, like infiltrative keratitis and uh, rarely you can see any uh, hypopian or uh, uh, other anti segment anti chamber reactions uh, coming to uh, the specific uh, uh, infective ulcers uh, uh, this uh, most of it is covered by the previous speakers uh, uh, dr vanadi dr namrata sharma have covered most of it uh, they have specific uh, characteristic features uh, that has to be identified before the culture reports are out so copious mucopurulent discharge and uh, dense stromal separation is uh, typically seen in uh, pseudomonas ulcer uh, and uh, a patient like this uh, you can see a, a string of pearls or a wreath like appearance of infiltrate which is uh, typical of nocardial infection in the initial stage uh, <clears throat> non tuberculous mycobacterial infection uh, can have a cracked windshield or a cracked mirror uh, appearance uh, this has to be picked up and uh, the treatment has to be started before the investigation results are out and not going to uh, uh, the details of this acanthamoeba infection has been just covered uh, by dr bupesh uh, coming to non infectious uh, keratitis uh, we have this uh, list of uh, conditions like uh, uh, peripheral ulcerative keratitis due to systemic conditions morens ulcers uh, terriens marginal uh, degeneration staphylococcal marginal ulcers uh, keratitis neurotrophic keratitis exposure keratopathy and the shielders uh, to mention a few and uh, this picture shows uh, peripheral ulcerative keratitis in rheumatoid arthritis uh, if you see here on the left hand side it is a crescent shaped uh, ulcer in the peripheral uh, cornea with uh, inflammation uh, in the adjacent uh, sclera this is a case of uh, uh, peripheral ulcerative keratitis with inflammation on the right hand side what you're seeing is the peripheral ulcerative keratitis without inflammation and uh, the condition is serious here uh, if you see a condition like this uh, uh, the patient has to be investigated thoroughly and uh, should be sent to a internist for uh, further management uh, most of the patients with scleritis and the peripheral ulcerative keratitis in the case of rheumatoid arthritis uh, need a, need systemic uh, uh, medication and it's actually the five year survival rate is almost 50% in these cases and they die of systemic vasculitis coming to the next case this is a peripheral ulcerative keratitis which in our setup we commonly see is the morens ulcer it involves the peripheral cornea in the interpalpebral region either nasally or temporally and then the ulcer progresses circumferentially either superiorly or inferiorly and if it is not treated it can lead to ulceration this is one of our case who, who did not come for follow up and ended up with the uh, perforation uh, and uh, there is early signs of uh, thesis also this particular patient didn't uh, follow all the medications uh, and uh, coming to the other condition uh, it is uh, terriens uh, marginal degeneration uh, it's not as aggressive as uh, morens ulcer uh, so here we see ulceration in the superior uh, or inferior periphery of the cornea which uh, progresses <coughs> inferiorly on the nasal side or uh, uh, temporal side and there can be a clear cut uh, uh, cornea clear cornea in between the lesion and the limbus uh, usually seen bilaterally and uh, uh, in males and uh, patients can have severe uh, drop in vision because of uh, uh, the photophobia or because of the irregular astigmatism due to this gutter like uh, uh, infiltration in the periphery marginal keratitis uh, due to uh, staphylococcus is another common cause of peripheral ulcerative keratitis uh, and uh, this is a inflammatory disease of the peripheral cornea which is uh, uh, characterized by peripheral stromal infiltrates which are often associated with epithelial breakdown and ulceration usually it is associated with the presence of uh, uh, chronic blepharoconjunctivitis or conjunctivitis or uh, a chronic meibomian gland disease and uh, it's a inflammatory response against uh, staphylococcus aureus antigens uh, 
the typical location is uh, at uh, four o'clock uh, or eight o'clock position or uh, uh, ten o'clock and two o'clock position where the uh, upper and lower eyelid come in contact with the cornea. Uh, the next condition is a neurotrophic uh, keratitis. Uh, it's because of the disruption disruption of uh, sensory and sympathetic pathways. Uh, and uh, loss of uh, trigeminal innervation to the cornea resulting in partial or complete uh, anesthesia which can lead to epithelial breakdown and uh, persistent ulceration and uh, the initial stages you can see course SPKs like this and the next stage uh, these uh, uh, course SPKs they coalesce and form a uh, dense epithelial defect uh, and uh, this defect progresses and can lead to uh, melting of the cornea, melting of the stoma, which uh, eventually leads to perforation of uh, <clears throat> the cornea. This is the third stage, uh, that is uh, perforation of cornea due to stomal melt. The next condition is the exposure keratopathy, uh, which is uh, uh, as a result of incomplete uh, lid closure. Uh, due to lack of thermos or many other conditions so with the drying of cornea despite normal tear production. So there are various conditions which can cause this. Uh, it could be neuroparalytic uh, due to seventh nerve palsy or uh, it could be due to reduced muscle tone uh, as you see in coma or in cases with uh, Parkinsonism. And mechanical due to lid scarring like burns, cicatricial femphigoid, and even lid coloboma. This is a lid coloboma, the superior uh, uh, part of the lid is not covering the cornea. And uh, abnormal uh, globe position like this uh, is a protrusion of the globe uh, where the uh, superior or inferior uh, lid cannot cover the conjunctive cornea, which can lead to exposure keratopathy. The initial stages you can see this. Uh, Cause <clears throat> uh, uh, epithelial uh, erosions, uh, which can uh, coalesce and form an epithelial ulcer, uh, uh, epithelial uh, defect, and if uh, not treated or if not uh, diagnosed, uh, can lead to thinning of the cornea and uh, eventual perforation of the cornea. And this exposure keratopathy due to lag of thermos is seen in the inferior uh, one third of the cornea. The next common condition is. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, shield ulcer, which is seen in uh, advanced cases of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Here again, uh, the ulcer is seen uh, in the mid peripheral cornea, in the upper one third of the cornea. And uh, it again goes through two to three stages. The initial stage, there can be an epithelial defect, which usually heals uh, with the lubricants and uh, other medications. Uh, but it can go to the next stage, that is uh, uh, stage two of a shield ulcer, uh, wherein inflammatory debris uh, accumulates uh, in the base of uh, these ulcers and uh, it uh, exhibits poor response to medical therapy. And the next stage is uh, the stage of uh, uh, plaque, elevated plaque. The ulcer uh, have a large base and uh, the elevated plaque, uh, uh, which uh, definitely needs surgical intervention uh, with the uh, 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 removal of this plaque and uh, amniotic membrane trans uh, transplantation. Uh, coming to a few of our experiences, some of our cases I'm just going to present here. Uh, this particular patient uh, is a case of uh, uh, accelerated keratitis, uh, accelerated CXL performed, uh, and uh, after three days he comes back to us with the ulcer like this, right in the center of the cornea, and uh, uh, we did a culture uh, sensitivity and uh, found out that it is a staphylococcal uh, ulcer and uh, treated him with the uh, fourth generation uh, <coughs> oxyfloxacin uh, and uh, we started steroids in this particular patient after a week and the patient responded well uh, and the visual acuity improved to 612 uh, <coughs> in this particular patient even though the ulcer was uh, in the center of the cornea. This was the first case uh, which was reported the microbial keratitis in a case of uh, accelerated carat uh, CXL was published in Ojibo from our institute. Uh, and uh, we compiled the data of almost uh, uh, four years uh, uh, patient retrospective analysis of uh, close to 1,000 cases. That is, uh, to be exact, 968 cases. Uh, and uh, we studied the profile of uh, this uh, infectious and sterile, sterile keratitis in these uh, patients who underwent uh, accelerated uh, collagen cross-linking. Uh, and uh, uh, we could find out uh, 10 cases with the uh, keratitis of which uh, three had the uh, infectious keratitis. All of them had staphylococcal aureus uh, 
uh, organism and uh, responded to uh, the first case responded to fourth generation uh, uh, fluoroquinolone and uh, the, the next two cases uh, were resistant to moxifloxacin they we had to prepare a, a third generation cephalosporin cefazolin 5% uh, topical application fortified uh, was used and the patients uh, responded to this treatment the remaining seven cases had uh, sterile keratitis uh, and uh, and our observation was um, all these cases had a steep fit and uh, uh, steep cornea and thin cornea and the static clear pooling is one of the reason for these uh, sterile infiltrates uh, staphylococcal antigens are responsible for these uh, infiltrates uh, and uh, there is enhanced uh, cell immediate immunity which is uh, because of the uh, uh, irradiation with the uh, cxl these are some of our cases uh, this is a, a typical case of uh, sterile infiltrates so multiple sterile infiltrates uh, seen all over the cornea in the central cornea and uh, and they responded to steroids this is another case of multiple uh, infiltrates small infiltrates uh, superficial to mid stromal infiltrates uh, and uh, the they are most of them are situated at the junction of uh, epithelialized and non epithelialized portion of the cornea we debride the cornea and at the junction of uh, this uh, epithelialized and uh, non epithelialized uh, portion uh, this uh, were seen in most of our cases it's just an observation uh, and this is an, another case uh, the patient uh, had undergone accelerated cxl uh, with the intacts and uh, she comes back uh, to us on day 3 with the infiltrate in the mid facial cornea and one small infiltrate right in the center with the hypopian <laughs> it was not sufficient material for microbiological examination we uh, went ahead and uh, uh, started her on uh, uh, anti fungal agents thinking that it is fungal the density of uh, hypopian was uh, so thick it was so we thought it is fungal and uh, started her on uh, anti fungal agents but uh, it uh, progressed on day 4 it progressed and so we again thought it could be Uh, could not be uh, it is not a case of fungal keratitis thought it is a sterile keratitis started her on uh, steroids topical prednisolone state uh, four times a day and she started showing uh, good response and uh, this is after the six weeks of uh, treatment the patient had improved the case of sterile keratitis uh, but present in a different way and amoeba keratitis ke cases hain jo respond ki hain and uh, this is another case uh, where we could see a amoeba uh, keratitis infiltrate uh, in the peripheral cornea again at the junction of uh, epithelialized and non epithelialized cornea and uh, this patient responded well uh, to topical uh, steroid uh, treatment and this is another case uh, which uh, the patient developed rashes all over the uh, face in the upper half of the face and uh, on examination the cornea showed a thin streak of infiltrate in the peripheral cornea and uh, there was a clear uh, cut uh, uh, area clear area of cornea between the limbus and uh, the infiltrate uh, this patient again is a sterile keratitis responded to uh, treatment one more uh, interesting case we <laughs> presented it uh, published it in uh, uh, jcrs so it's a unilateral sterile infiltrate uh, uh, following a small incision uh, in a lenticular extraction in a smile procedure this patient did well and the next day the patient was very happy 66 uh, plano and uh, he comes back to us after a week uh, with the mild uh, drop in vision his vision uh, uh, came down to 69 and he had some mild uh, watering and uh, mild symptoms of photophobia and on examination the torchlight examination showed a picture similar to a hypopian dense hypopian but on careful examination on slit lamp we found a crescentic uh, uh, infiltrate dense infiltrate in the peripheral cornea outside the treatment zone that is uh, below the uh, treatment zone and uh, we went ahead and searched uh, uh, online uh, for any publications on this uh, but uh, there was no such publications and uh, we published this we started uh, this particular patient on uh, steroids both topical and systemic steroids patient responded well uh, within uh, two weeks uh, the cornea became uh, clear so uh, these in non infectious keratitis uh, can present in different ways this is another case and you know, one or two more slides uh, please 
and this is a case uh, post classic uh, two years uh, the patient uh, had injured uh, his eye uh, with a vegetative matter and uh, uh, the clinical uh, suspicion was a uh, fungal ulcer uh, we started antifungal agents and uh, we took him up for uh, uh, flap lift and uh, took a, a specimen for fracture uh, and sensitivity this particular patient uh, did well there was a dense scar but uh, we uh, it, it did not require any flap amputation uh, uh, we could control the infection uh, well this is a last uh, case uh, uh, we uh, presented uh, which is in ijo uh, this is a dense infiltrate uh, which uh, developed uh, the patient came back to us after two months of the surgery uh, dense infiltrate the patient was using steroids the patient was not very symptomatic because of the steroid usage uh, but on examination uh, i could see a dense infiltrate at the interface uh, looking like a fungal ball uh, we did a modified uh, debulking procedure in this particular patient uh, started on antifungal agents uh, the patient responded uh, uh, to the treatment uh, since it was uh, in the paracentral area did not affect the vision uh, very much there was some uh, cylindrical error uh, but the patient did well uh, and this was published in ijo so to conclude uh, uh, it's uh, like it's very difficult to differentiate uh, this uh, uh yes infective and sterile infections uh, of the cornea it's not an easy task for even a best uh, clinicians or best surgeons however with the careful history taking uh, physical examination or a differential diagnosis and proper treatment patients uh, can have the best chance of uh, making the best of a bad situation thank you very much